Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. You see all these drag plants around? It is monsoon time. Top of the news. Cleaners to get at least two weeks pay as bonus from 2020. All I can say is if our newspapers think that this is top of the news, our newspapers are sick and our country is doomed. Do we have to pass a law to make businesses pay cleaners two weeks salary as bonus when their salaries are so low? Why do we look at why people are earning 60 months bonus, 100 months bonus, and then we make this top of the news? It's disgusting. Now, this is a good top of the news. Huh? This guy, Mr. New, CEO of SMRT, he has given up his car to take the MRT so as to better understand his job. That's exactly the point. People up there must understand their job. What is their job? Not to sit down in their office and shake their leg in the air-conditioned office. They must go down to the ground and see how the plebs live, how they have to rush to work, go to a hawker centre, quickly eat their food, quickly go here, quickly go there. So he's doing a good job. Three cheers to you, Mr. Neo. I will even pray for your success. Enhanced security checks start at two MRT stations. I think... Security is always very good. We should teach our children wherever they go, they must always be conscious of what's around them, who's around them, and where they're heading. Ministerial visits to all constituencies by 2020? Jolly good idea. But, Minister, are you getting real feedback or BS from your grassroots people? You know, I talk a lot to my driver who has been working for me for the past 36 years. And he's Malay and he can be honest with me because he knows me for 36 years. I said to him, Mohammed, why don't you give the ministers all this feedback you're giving to me in the car? And he said, Ivy, kita takut lah. Kita takut lah means we are frightened, you know? I said, of what? He said, of the do knock on your door at 2 a.m. Can you believe in this day and time, 21, 8 November, and people are still frightened of the knock on the door at 2 a.m. You should read this article in the Business Times Top. Sorry, government can't be hands off about the property cycle. Lawrence Wong, you're doing good work. You said, our aim is not to bring prices down. Our aim is to steady the property cycle and have a sustained property market where prices move broadly in line with income growth of fundamentals. And I think that is absolutely a good policy. And as a property owner, I totally agree with it. We should not have property prices going so sky high that all the young people feel so worried that they cannot buy a home. All Singaporeans must feel that they can buy a home, start a family and live a happy life because we, have, we are a good country. You know, you just have to look at the Australian system. They have a very good uh, hand on their property market. And their island is a little bit bigger than ours. When developers launch a development, they can only collect 10% as a deposit. The buyer only ends up paying the 90% when they get the keys to the property. And the developer has to pay interest on the 10% that the buyer has paid. That caps the ability of the developer to keep developing and using other people's money to build. And another good one by Minister Lawrence Wong is looking at the lease buyback scheme extension and the details likely to be ready by early 2019. I think this is a very good move because people are getting old, they are worried as to whether they have a place to live till they die and whether they have enough money to live till they die. Singapore courts stick to rule of law, Chief Justice. You know, he said, I can think of a number of cases where I wish that the law was other than what I concluded that it was and that a different result could be reached, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm a bit confused, CJ. Uh, I always thought 
the job of the CJ and the High Court judges, etc., was to look at the laws of our land and even at the Constitution and make sure that the laws are fair and good for the people. Yes, the rule of law is important, but I think that there must be some conscience to look at the rule of law. Is it set up fairly to rule the people or is it, is it set up unfairly and only favour the people in power? That is critical to whether your country is a good country or just a great country for some. Lawyers raise concerns over move to cut their fees you know, it's about bloody time that the Ministry of Law, and they're doing that now, to put a scale of costs. People should be motivated by doing what is right in their conscience. And if they can make some money, and even a lot of money, vis-a-vis -vis what the average man in the street is making, they should be very grateful. So all this sound and fury of all these wonderful men meeting and maybe one woman amongst them or what. APEC fails to release joint statement. APEC divided over trade fails to issue joint statement. Do you notice that most of these meetings are attended by mostly men, all dressed up in their three-piece suits, flying in, in their private jets, creating a lot of carbon emissions and living luxurious life and eating fantastic food. So, forget APEC, just go ASEAN and Asian. Seriously, ASEAN should just look after ourselves, talk to our Asian partners who are trying to help us instead of selling us bombs and guns to shoot at each other. This terrible disaster, food poisoning, is not just about spice the restaurant. It is about the entire food growing, food production, killing of the animals that we eat. That is the problem. We do not have a proper coal chain supply system in Singapore. If food which is frozen and then is defrosted and then is frozen again is dangerous. Many of the vans that supply frozen food do not have proper cold enough system. By the time the chicken is delivered, it is almost defrosted. And then the restaurant freezes it again. I do not understand why supermarkets love to sell thawed food. You know, they thaw the food and they tell you you must cook it on that day. What if you don't cook it on that day? Where do our restaurant people come from? They come from the worst backward countries in the world with terrible standards. They go to the toilet. They do not use toilet paper. They wash their backside right, with their hands. And they come out and they don't wash their hands again. I never like to eat in these restaurants. And I think you know which restaurants I mean. Education lessons for Singapore from Finnish inclusivity. Why should we need to learn from the Finnish? We are the best education system in the world. Do you get it? Read between the lines. From EM3 to PhD, this wonderful child who had only 124 in PSLE, maybe a little bit higher than mine, and he is now a PhD A-star researcher. Well done. There's hope for all of us. <laughs> See this naughty little pig in China? Probably has African swine fever. But what worries me is that it says African swine fever is not harmful to humans, but causes deadly hemorrhagic fever in domestic pigs and wild boars. And you know, I am surrounded by wild boars at my farm. I'm going to shoot them soon. You know, I never had children because I would probably kill my kids if they're not perfect like me. So when I read something like this, nothing's a sacrifice when you enjoy being with, with kids. 
I think these people are so wonderful. You know, their message is absolutely good. Nothing's a sacrifice when you enjoy being with kids. What they're basically saying is, don't have kids if you don't enjoy them. And I think the world is what it is today because many children are hurt children and we should stop producing hurt children. We should get more people like Mr. Ifeon Harun and his wife, Madam Salina Pasiri, who really love children, to be able to look after more of them. And the government should help people like them with a big heart and a real love for children to adopt more children and be able to bring them up to be wonderful citizens. Thank you for watching my show again. Please remember to subscribe so that you can continue watching more of them.